All right, let's have a look at this problem. Now, here we're looking at AC sources. Both of these sources are of the same frequency. Um, we're assuming here RMS values. And this is a steady state sinusoidal response that we're going to be looking at. All right, we're going to use mesh analysis and we're going to have a look at how we would find uh, those mesh currents I1 and I2. So let's, let's draw them in. So here is the I1 mesh current. Here is the I2 mesh current. All right, let's see what we can write down. So the I1 mesh. Okay, so we're gonna travel around in the direction of the mesh current, so we're starting here. So what do we have? We're going up, we're gonna say that this is what, a 20, and of course it's got an angle zero associated with it. Um, we have a minus I1, I'm just gonna put in the value Z1 for the moment, Z1, and then a minus, let's look at this guy here, that is bracket I1, minus I2 times 10, and all of that is equal to zero. All right, so there's our first mesh I1 equation. All right, let's um, write the I2 mesh current equation. So where are we gonna start? Well, look, doesn't matter where we start, let's start right here and go round, okay? So what do we have? We have a minus, open a bracket, this is I2 minus I1, so there's I2 minus I1, closing bracket, times 10. Going in this direction, that's a minus I2 times Z2, and then dropping here, that is a minus 30, which is at an angle zero, oh sorry, at an angle minus 90, and all of that is equal to zero. All right. Well, <clears throat> let's see if we can maybe tidy this stuff up a little bit here, okay? So we're gonna work on the first equation over here. All right, so what do we have here? Well, I'm gonna take these two parts really to the other side, and I'm also gonna substitute the values for Z1 and Z2. So if we do this, what we get is we have a 20, uh, that's angle zero, is equal to, all right, so we have an I1, times Z1, well that's a J15, J15, and then I have this to the other side, that becomes a plus bracket I1 minus I2, and that is multiplied by 10. All right, <clears throat> taking this a little further. So that's 20, angle zero is equal to, we have I1, and that's what, J15, Fifteen, okay. <clears throat> that is going to be a plus. What is this? I one times ten, and then I've got a minus I two times ten. Okay. Now let's look at what we have here. We're going to factor out that I one and see what we've got left. So that's a twenty. Angle zero is equal to what? Well, it's gonna be an I1 in the bracket. We have, what, the real bit, 10, and we have a plus J15, close the bracket, minus I2, 10. All right, now that's in a rectangular representation. So let's rewrite that so we also have it in a polar form. So this is 20, angle zero is equal to I1, and the polar representation here is 18, angle, and it's 56.3, a little bit of rounding there, and then I've got a minus I2 times 10. You go ahead and please check that for me. All right. Working on the I2 mesh current, let's see if we can simplify this a little bit here. Going to take this guy to the other side. So we have 30, uh, that's at an angle minus 90, uh, that is equal to, all right, so what do we got? We've got the minus, open that bracket, this is I2 
minus I1 times 10. And then we've got a, what have we got over here? We've got um, basically this guy here, which is a minus I2, and that's times what the Z2, and the Z2, if you remember, was a minus, I'll just put it in like this, at a minus J5, okay? All right, taking this just a little bit further, this means that we have a 30, angle minus 90 is equal to, um, I'll leave that as a moment as it is, uh, times 10, and this of course is minus comes outside and we've got a plus uh, I2 times J5, okay? So, <clears throat> we've got 30, angle minus 90 is equal to, um, well, let's multiply this out and see what we have. Um, that's a minus, tons of minus, so this gives me what? This gives me I1, really, times 10. Okay, then what have I got left? I've got 10 I2s with a minus in front of it, so that's a minus I2 times 10. And then I've got my plus I2 times J5. All right. So I'm going to group my terms together, and so what I have here is a 30, angle minus 90, is equal to, I've got I1 times 10, and then I've got a minus I2, and in the bracket I've got a 10, and I've got a minus J5 sitting in the bracket like so. So that when you expand this guy out, that's a minus I210, that's that term there, a minus I2 times a minus J5, which gives me, so that's a minus times a minus, which gives me that term over there. One more step for the moment, 30, angle minus 90 is equal to the I1 times 10, and I've got a minus I2, and if I write this bit in polar form over here, this is 11, 0.18 and the angle there is a minus 26.57 and once again I'd like you to go ahead and please check that. So here are the two mesh equations somewhat simplified. Now we need to solve for I1 and I2 and there are various ways that we can actually do this. Now what I'm going to suggest here is that we Basically, operate on this guy here, okay, and what we'll do is we'll take this part to the other side. So if we do that, we've got a 30, that's an angle minus 90. Uh, taking this to the other side, that's a plus I2 uh, times 11.18, angle minus 26.57 is equal to what? I1 times 10. So therefore we can say I1 is really equal to, so dividing both of these terms by 10, we have what? 3 at an angle of minus 90 plus I2. Dividing that guy by 10, we have what? 1.118 angle minus 26.57. I now have this expression, I'll put it in a bracket here, for I1. What I want to do then is substitute I1 into this equation up here. So I'm going to put this in replace of this guy here. So this is placed in for my I1, and then I can solve for I2. So look, what I suggest you do now is take a little break, and this will be a good exercise for you. When you're ready, have a go at this and see if you can solve basically for I2. And then when you're ready, come on back. I will work that together. Mm -hmm.